Welcome, my dear students and others, to this continuing Chapter 10 coverage of gases. To begin, I would like to share with you a link to a cool video that shows how temperature and volume interrelate gases, ideal or otherwise. The link shown right here is also shown in the description below or possibly floating over my head as an in-video card that you're welcome to visit. Now, as you watch this video, I invite you to answer the question to yourself. When balloons are immersed in liquid nitrogen, they shrink. Why? And separately, why do the balloons expand when they warm up? All right, now after this video and some other videos that may follow, you will learn how to perform calculations using the ideal gas law as discussed in section 10.4 of our text, which is referenced in the description below. Calculate a gas's density and molar mass by using this equation from our text. Use Dalton's law of partial pressures to calculate individual gases' partial pressures and a system's total pressure and calculate partial pressures using mole fractions. And please note that we'll skip section seven through nine of chapter 10. So that's where we're going. Let's get into it. Beginning with the ideal gas law. So the following equation, which is taken from our text, is known as the ideal gas law, where P is a gas's pressure, V is its volume, N is its number of moles, R is its ideal gas constant, and T is the gas's temperature. Now this equation can be used to interconvert between an ideal gas's pressure, volume, and temperature. Isn't that great? So you might ask then, what in the world is R? Well, R of course is the ideal gas constant, which can vary somewhat depending on which units you use. This table right here shows various different versions of the ideal gas constant that are essentially numerically identical just with swapped out units, depending on which set of units you pick. For all of my students who take this class, I will not make you memorize the ideal gas constant, but will provide this table for you. I finish this video then with a bunch of lecture problems. I'm not going to solve them in this video, but I will post links in the description below or floating as in video card links to separate videos in which I solve most, if not all of them. The first one says, calculate the following quantities for an ideal gas. I won't read this to you, but I'll let you read it on your own. The next one says, the Goodyear blimps, which frequently fly over sporting events, hold approximately this volume of helium. If the gas is at this temperature and one atmosphere pressure, what is the mass of the helium in the blimp? Our next question says, use the ideal gas law to calculate the volume of one mole of an ideal gas at STP. And next, calculate the number of molecules in a deep breath of air whose volume is 2.25 liters at body temperature and a pressure of 735 torr. The next question is, a scuba diver's tank contains this many kilograms of O2 compressed into this volume. Keeping that in mind, I want you to calculate the gas pressure inside the tank at this temperature. And then separately, what volume would this oxygen occupy at 26C and 0.95 atmospheres? And our last question, which is a doozy, says that calcium hydride reacts with water to form hydrogen gas according to this chemical equation, which chemistry, by the way, is sometimes used to inflate life rafts, weather balloons, and other things when a simple compact means of generating H2 is needed. Now, given this equation, how many grams of calcium hydride are needed to generate 145 liters of H2 gas if the pressure of the H2 is 825 torr and the temperature is 21 degrees C? That ends this video then. Please click those other videos in the description below to go to see the worked out answers. I promise they will be of value. Until next time then, my dear students and others, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.